1603. A lot of people thought their idea of a machine that could fly was, well, as Zaya would put it, kooky pants. Well, this summer we met a group of engineers in Austria who are dealing with a whole new generation of doubters. And it's not hard to see why. Their flying machine doesn't even look like it should fly. If it does revolutionize air travel, though, like its designers hope it will, just remember Daily Planet, first TV crew in the world to be invited to a test flight. Not far from Vienna, the quiet of a small town industrial park is pierced by an ear-splitting sound. Hello, come in, come in. I show you something absolutely new. This is Titulus, a completely new airplane. Nobody has seen it before. Maybe it looks like very strange to you. Hopefully, it will fly. It doesn't look like it should fly, but a few weeks ago, with rotor blades turning at over 2,000 revolutions per minute. For the first time, it did fly. Daedalus is a cyclogyro, a craft with blades on rotating cylinders. Many have tried to build them, but with little success until now. Inventor Meinhard Schweiger and his team want to build a futuristic passenger craft that will revolutionize air travel. Frame. They've been working on Daedalus for a year. Today, they want to prove to an investor that it can do more than just hover. What we also want to show you is take off vertical, stay stable in the air, and make a rotation left and right side and go down landing. Nearly all of us here have done this before, but can I just remind everyone of safety? Very first thing is ear defenders. This is going to be very noisy. His partner is David Wills, a former British Army Brigadier. On top of that, make sure you don't stand in front of the direction of the blades. It works like a gun. If the carbon fiber rotor blades splinter, they'll turn into lethal projectiles. Please, every one of you, if you see anything going wrong, shut, stop! Rick is the main man who's going to keep his eye um, on the machine to make sure that Daedalus doesn't have a problem, and he will be nearest to it. No one ever stand closer than, than Rick to the aircraft. An expert pilot will fly it by remote control. Okay, Christoph. Chief mechanic Rick Engman uses an electric motor to start the 160 horsepower snowmobile engine. It doesn't have a muffler. That's why it's so loud. The rotors will turn when the engine produces enough RPMs to engage a clutch. Rick signals the pilot to increase speed. You can feel the sound in your whole body. Something's not right. The rotors aren't generating enough lift. Rick goes underneath. We're having a problem with the clutch. It's not gripping correctly. It's The clutch isn't slipping into gear. When we try to give it the gas, it comes out. The clutch is coming apart, so the rotors can't turn fast enough. Speed is essential because the rotor blades have to move a lot of air. The rotor blade sucks in the air from the outside and pushes out to the other side. In that way, we can create a trust and we can influence, without influencing the rotation speed, the amount of the trust and the direction of the trust. One of Meinhard's key inventions is rotor blades that change pitch, so they precisely control the thrust. The blades are moved by servo motors controlled by an autopilot. The autopilot maneuvers by changing the pitch of rotor blades in four separately controlled cylinders. The goal is to use Daedalus only for peaceful purposes. At first, they want to build an unmanned version with a quiet electric motor. In theory, it could move more efficiently than a helicopter. It could rotate itself in multiple directions, synchronize its motions with a heaving ship deck, and thrust upwards to glue itself down. 
be able to do maritime search and rescue, throw out lifeboats, and do an awful lot of things that conventional helicopters can't do in really bad weather. Then, the plan is to change the world with a new kind of passenger vehicle. Like a quad bike in the air that could go at 400 kilometers an hour. But first, Daedalus has to get off the ground. This is <laughs> mechanic's best friend, Loctite. <laughs> Rick applies some glue to hold the clutch together. After the glue dries, they try again. The rotors engage, and everything appears to be working fine. But Daedalus seems to be straining to get in the air. For some reason, it's not happening. Before the engine can burn out, Meinhardt calls it quits. That, yeah. to me, is a perfect aircraft now. There's nothing that we feel is broken or we're trying to, to push it beyond its capability. Uh, and we've taken it in the air before. But we don't know why not today. Yeah. They work on the problem for a few days. We found it was a combination of two other things. One, it was the very first time we'd ever used this particular type of tooth belt. This one was too tight, and we found that when we looked at the black box. The other problem was a software glitch that limited the rotor speed to 2,100 RPMs. Not enough to get a slightly heavier machine into the air. So every time we got up to 2,100 RPM, it died. We say in Austria, holding thumbs, or <laughs> fingers crossed. We fixed it. The engine comes up to speed. The tension is almost unbearable. Then... Happiness. The machine flies. It doesn't maneuver as much as they wanted it to, but it's enough to satisfy their investor. Perfect. <laughs> Bloody noisy <laughs> when that started. <laughs> and they win funding for a smaller, quieter prototype. 